Hey guys, I wanted to do a quick update on my vintage travel trailer. It has been about six months now since I bought back my great grandfather's vintage camper. And in today's video, I'm just going to share an update on my journey so far and what I've done to my camper and also a really exciting discovery that I've made. So I hope you'll follow along in today's video. When I first brought my vintage camper home back in May, I didn't do a whole lot to it right away, largely because the summer heat was really hard for me to work in, but also because I had like a million other projects going on at the time, and this project sort of just landed on my lap, and I wasn't quite ready for it right away. But back then, I was able to take the toilet out of the bathroom and also remove my stove. Um, I also sorted through some miscellaneous items in the camper back then, but other than that, I didn't do a whole lot. In hindsight, though, I'm actually grateful that I didn't work on it during the summer because that time allowed me to do some more research on the proper way to restore campers, and I learned a lot in that time. So today is May 22nd and it's been five days since I've got my camper and today I'm going to be cleaning it out, taking some things apart and starting the process of kind of, I guess you could call it demolition, but not really, kind of, I need to take a lot out. <laughs> it's kind of gross right now. So I hope you follow along and we'll see what we find. Today is May 23rd, and I didn't do a whole lot yesterday in the camper except for cleaning it out. Um, and partially the reason why was because I have these really weird screws in my camper. They look like this, if you can see that. And they're called clutch screws, and I didn't have a drill bit that would fit that. But thankfully, my uncle had one, so <clears throat> he's letting me borrow his. And I also stopped yesterday because I was just really potsy. It was really hot out here. And um, so, yeah, I have an earlier start this morning, and hopefully I can beat the heat a little bit and get some more work done. Removing my toilet was so exhausting, and it literally took me hours. The way it's designed is there is a bolt on either side of the toilet and unfortunately the bolts were rotted and very difficult to reach. Because of that I eventually had to ask my dad for some help and he was able to untighten the bolts for me but that wasn't until after I broke my pliers. I don't think this is supposed to happen. Here's the moment you've been waiting for it when the stove gets to come out. Everything's all loosened up. Luckily, my stove was in really good shape and I should be able to salvage it and use it again. Taking the stove out really was not that difficult. It was just a series of unloosening some screws and also some propane lines. I've decided I'm selling my trailer. Um, yeah. Oh my god. I'm selling it because that's a spider.
So it is now the fall. We are in November and it is getting quite cold outside. It's in the 30s right now, I think. Um, and as you can see, my camper is not warm. I do not have windows in it anymore. Behind me, you might be able to see. There's no window there. <laughs> not that it was sealed very well before, but hey, it is, it is completely open to the elements right now. Um, one of the first things that I did was I took all of my appliances out. This included the water heater, the regular heater, uh, the refrigerator, the stove. Um, I also took the sink out and all that jazz. Okay, so I am taking out this dinette booth right behind me. I already took out the other one yesterday and I discovered a very gross rodent nest of some kind. I don't know if it's mice or squirrels, which is why I'm wearing a mask. Anyway, hopefully I can get this one out. It's kind of really stuck in there and I have the water heater in there to try to um, get out too, so. I decided to use some sticks that I found outside in order to remove my rodent nest. I know, I know, perhaps it's not the most conventional way, but hey, it worked. After that, I started to remove the screws that were holding my water heater in place. And that was about the time that I realized I needed to get some better drill bits for my clutch head screws. The water heaters are designed to be removed from the exterior of the camper, so that's what I did next. Removing the regular heater was honestly so much fun. And I don't know why I enjoyed it so much, but I think it was honestly just so simple compared to my other appliances that I was able to just take my time with it and enjoy myself. After working on the inside, I went to the exterior of the camper and removed the paneling that was over the heater. I also worked to remove some of the screws that was holding the heater in place and then went on to use my pry bar to loosen up some of the silicone. The pry bar has proved to be one of the most valuable and handiest tools that I've used so far in my dismantling process. And I don't know how I would have done any of it without it. It was cool to see how my heater was made and how it was put together. But it wasn't long before I discovered a hornet nest deep inside my heater duct. But hey, it comes with the territory of a 50 year old camper. It was in this moment that I was wondering, hey, I wonder how heavy my heater's gonna be. But I was pleasantly surprised when I discovered that my heater wasn't that heavy at all. I picked it up, brought it outside, huh, <sighs> another task complete. Then I moved on to my refrigerator. After unscrewing some screws on the inside and outside, I realized I just had to use my pry bar to loosen the fridge from the wall. Refrigerators are really heavy, so I had to ask for some help lifting it. All my appliances are out now. I found a really cool little flyer, like an old camper camping brochure from a campground which was kind of interesting and I think it was really cool because most likely it belonged to my great grandparents so it's nice to see little hints of them buried pretty deep within this camper. So if you've been following along with my camper journey so far you would know that I have no idea what my camper is. Um, up until this point I haven't known what brand it is, I haven't even known what year it is, despite it being tossed around my family for generations. Moving on, I also decided to take my fuse panel out, which was located in my closet, and it was during that time that I made a really big discovery. So I just found the missing puzzle piece that I have been looking for in my camper and it was in one of the most unsuspecting places underneath the closet floor i'm so excited so i just took the closet floor out it was screwed down 
so that I could get this cord out so that I could take my fuse panel off. But in the process of doing that, I found a piece of paper right down there. And this is the piece of paper that I found. As you can see, my camper is a Comanche travel trailer and it was manufactured on September 7th, 1973. This piece of paper is like a golden ticket to me. Um, when I made this discovery, I was completely overjoyed. I was so excited, I nearly cried, and I pretty much right away started to do research into Comanche travel trailers, hoping to find some more information. And what I discovered was that these campers were made from 1950s until the early 1970s, which means that most likely my camper was one of the last ones to be made. I also discovered that Comanche travel trailers were manufactured in a place called Elkhart, Indiana. And at first I was really excited and I was like, oh, this is cool beans. All I have to do is contact that town. Maybe they have some history on this company. But as it turns out, most campers were manufactured in Elkhart, Indiana. And Elkhart, Indiana is sort of the hub for RVs and travel trailers. In fact, I'm pretty sure it still is. So Comanche Travel Trailers was just one company out of many that were made in this community. So unfortunately, there's not a lot that I have discovered about this brand, but it's definitely something that I'm always going to be looking into. Knowing what my camper is has given my restoration process more direction. Um, it's nice to know exactly what you are restoring so that I can get emblems that symbolize the original emblems um, and I can sort of bring it back to what it used to be. Um, so this discovery is, it is really exciting. After removing my fuse panel and finding that golden ticket of a piece of paper, I moved on and I removed my sink and I also removed my upper cabinets and the bed frame. Basically anything and everything that didn't have anything to do with the structure of my camper, I removed. After doing that, I worked on taking the windows out and right now, sorry, there's a big lawnmower going by. I removed all the light fixtures, um, yeah, everything that I could really. There was one screw on the upper cabinet that was at a really awkward angle, and because of that, I had to ask for some help. It's kind of hard for us Potsies to have our hands over our head for too long, so I'm definitely grateful for the help I had removing the upper cabinets. The light fixtures were really easy to remove, and I took each one off and carefully labeled them so I knew exactly where they went. Just found this cool piece of wallpaper that was underneath the interior window trim. And I think that's kind of cool. So somewhere along the line, someone had that on the wall. I get in there. There's really not much left inside of here. The interior cabinets, all the overhead cabinets are out. Light fixtures are out. After that, I moved on to the exterior and I began to remove my windows and my lights. Um, I just kind of went to work on the exterior removing everything I could. 
After working for so long on the inside of my camper, I was so excited to finally be working on the exterior. Here I am removing my tail lights from my camper and carefully labeling them so that I knew which side they belonged to. It's unlikely that I'll be able to reuse these lights because the lens were cracked, but we'll see what happens. Removing my windows was a simple process and something that I really enjoyed. You can see here, the window on the right has a rubber gasket covering the screws. But because my camper's so old, most of those rubber gaskets weren't there anymore, which made the process go a little bit faster. After unscrewing the screws, I just had to use my pry bar and pop my windows out. The front and back windows on my camper was definitely a two-person job. The windows are kind of awkward to handle, and I didn't want to run the risk of them falling and breaking, because windows like this are really hard to replace. So I was really thankful for my mom's help. Most of the lenses on my marker lights were cracked and most likely I won't be reusing them. But even still, I carefully removed them and labeled them anyway. Removing the door by myself felt like a sketchy process, but my helpers were busy and I was up for the challenge. Thankfully, the door wasn't too heavy and because of the thick layer of silicone, it came down pretty slowly, so I was able to manage it just fine. The bunk windows are built a little bit differently, which meant that it took me a little time in order to figure out how to properly remove them. But once I did, it really wasn't that difficult. The next steps in my process I'm going to be documenting in a separate video. Um, I'm going to be working to remove the skin and taking walls down, so that is to come. But if you've been following along with my journey so far, thank you so much. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I'm looking forward to seeing this Comanche Travel Trailer come back to life. It has been neglected for a really long time, um, and I'm just so excited. So thank you guys for following along. As always, keep on keeping on. Hey guys, thanks for watching. What a fun process this has been so far. Be sure to look for the next video soon. And to stay up to date on the latest happenings in the pots world, to buy a flower pot, or to buy a copy of one of my books, be sure to check out my website. Until next time, keep on keeping on.